The year was 1934, and America is in the middle of the Great Depression. In order to revive passenger rail service, the Union Pacific introduced the sleek M10,000. Liner captured the American imagination. Newsweek described the M10,000 as a great bulbous headed caterpillar, but according to one writer, the train looked more like a snake as it sped along the track. With its novel bubble top, tapered observation car, and waterfall grill, it embodied smooth forward motion even while it stood still. Two years later, in 1936, Marx introduced the M10,005. According to Greenberg's guide, the M10,005 was produced all the way up until 1954. Marx also produced steam-powered streamliners such as the Commodore Vanderbilt and the New York Central Mercury starting in 1938. We'll highlight both these trains in a later episode. This is the M10,005 in green and cream. This is one of my favorite trains. It's so smooth running, very sleek. The name Streamliner evokes a feeling of modernism, speed, and the hope that American ingenuity and technology could lead the nation out of the Great Depression. Legendary trains such as the M10,000, the Zephyr, the 20th Century Limited, and the Hiawatha were examples of crack streamliners that raced across the country at breakneck speeds. success of the M10,000, the Union Pacific added nine more streamliners to its fleet. The M10,000 had accomplished the goal of reviving and injecting excitement and glamour back into rail travel. One awestruck man was quoted as saying, they don't really run this Union Pacific train, they just aim and shoot it. On the morning of May 26, 1934, a shimmering silver locomotive pulled out of Denver's Union Station bound for Chicago. The Zephyr was unlike any train seen before. Known for its long, sleek look and powered by a revolutionary compact diesel engine, it would cover 1,015 miles in a record 15 hours. 
By the 1940s, fleets of streamliners crisscrossed the country, making U.S. rail, passenger rail service, the envy of the world. American Flyer entered the 1930s with the introduction of a cast aluminum Burlington Zephyr. What you're looking at is the less expensive tin lithograph version of the Zephyr cataloged in 1935. The 562 power car came in clockwork or electric versions. The cars are articulated and connected with a locking pin device similar in nature to Mark's connectors. This is a version of the Marks M10,000 in canary and cream. The speed, economy, and efficiencies of the streamliners proved to be a tremendous asset to the United States during World War II. Trains carried 90% of the defense freight and 97% of the troops. Given their wartime performance, railroad men were hopeful for the future. But the optimism was short-lived. In the decade following the war, Washington launched massive highway building projects and hundreds of cities built new airports. Railroads were hit hard. In 1954, 2,500 inner-city passenger trains were in operations. By 1969, there were fewer than 500. Today, there are less than 100. Well, that's the Mark Streamliner story. Hope you enjoyed, and as always, have fun out there.